Right now, I am about to explain the entire timeline of the X-Men franchise in the simplest language possible without confusing you, even to a smaller degree. More than 20 hours of X-Men movies are going to be summarized within 10 minutes. If you are still watching, let's begin. Over here, you can get to see the X-Men movies from left to right sorted by their release dates. If you look above, you can find another chronological order based on the actual events that took place within the X-Men movies. I have removed the Deadpool series as well as the Dark Phoenix movies because of two reasons. Deadpool 1 and 2 are no way directly connected to the original or alternate X-Men timeline. And then, Dark Phoenix was literally a disgrace to the X-Men franchise. I would rather drink 100 gallons of bath water from Belly Delphin than to watch this bullshit. If you take a look at the diagram, you can notice that the first event in the X-Men franchise actually took place in the 2011 X-Men First Class movie. Eric and Professor Charles Xavier met for the first time in 1962. That's when they became good friends. They worked together to defeat Sebastian Shaw who wanted to cause a nuclear war to wipe out all the humans on earth and also making the mutants more powerful as their body is very much radioactive. Now, some of you can complain that there is another event that took place in 1845 in the X-Men Origins movie. Logan got to find out his mutant powers for the first time. But this event is not necessary to explain the original timeline. So, let's move forward. The second event took place in the 2009 X-Men Origins movie, starting from the American Civil War in 1861 until the Vietnam War in 1973. You can get to see Logan and his half-brother Victor Creed fighting together as a soldier. In 1979, a life-changing event took place with Logan. His bone got fused with adamantium by Colonel Stryker. In the end of the movie, Logan ran away from the Three Mile Island after getting his memories wiped out by an adamantium bullet by the gun of Colonel Stryker. You can also get to see a small tease of Professor Charles Xavier by the end of this movie who went over there to rescue the mutant children and teenagers from the wrong hands. Look at the diagram again. In the 2000 X-Men movie, Logan ran away to the Northern Canada and he gets attacked by Sabretooth in the middle of nowhere and then gets rescued by Storm and Cyclops. He is then taken to the Xavier School in Westchester, New York City where he gets to meet Professor Charles Xavier for the second time. Wait, 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 for the second time? Really? Because in 1962, Charles and Eric met Logan for the first time when they both had been young. When Logan was approached by both of these friends, he said, Excuse me, I'm Eric Lentra. Charles Xavier. Go fuck yourself. Look at the diagram again. In the 2003 X-Men United movie, Logan had to face Colonel Stryker again who is now on a mission to eliminate all the mutants on Earth with the help of Professor Charles Xavier. And hey, this is the same Colonel who put adamantium into the bone of Logan in the 2009 X-Men Origins movie. He was much younger back then. In the 2006 X-Men The Last Stand, you can get to see the return of Dr. Jean as Phoenix after she sacrificed herself to save the X-Team near the Alkali Lake in the climate of the 2003 installment. Surprisingly, she kills Professor Xavier and, in the climax of the movie, Logan had to kill this woman after realizing that her phoenix force can cause a massacre and destruction to this planet. Let's take a tour from Japan. In 1945, Logan was locked in an underground cage as a war prisoner and he saved the life of a prison guard named Yashida from a nuclear blast. In 2013, he is now just a skinny old man plotting his way to achieve healing power from the body of Logan. Logan goes to Nagasaki to say goodbye to this old man without knowing the evil intentions of this motherfucker. He finally manages to kill the man, save the granddaughter of Yashida and then gets back to Canada. In 2015, he goes back to the United States and in the airport he finds out that Professor Xavier is still alive. He actually transferred his consciousness into the body of his own twin brother who was a coma patient that time. He is even working together with Eric against a great threat called the Sentinels. Here comes the most confusing part which will end up in a brand new timeline. But don't worry, I'm gonna explain this new timeline in the simplest language possible as I promised in the beginning. In the 2014 X-Men Days of Future Past, Logan goes back to the past in 1973 with the help of Kitty Pride to stop Mystique from killing Dr. Trask to avoid getting a bad reputation as a mutant and save the world from a sentinel war. After the success, Logan comes back to 2023 and finds out that everyone is living in peace together. The sentinel threat is now 
over, the war between the mutants and the humans was avoided successfully. Even Dr. Jean and Scott Summers, who died in the 2006 installment, also came back because of the new timeline. Look at the diagram again. We are almost close to the end of the video. In the 2016 Apocalypse movie, you can get to see the younger versions of Xavier and Eric fighting together against another great evil named El Sabanur Elohim. This purple son of a bitch considers himself to be God. Like what the fuck? The story of this movie takes place in the new timeline after the 2014 installment. This event took place in 1983, just 10 years after the time travel of Logan to create a new timeline for bringing back peace. And yeah, this time, they also show a glimpse of Logan being captured inside the Alkali lab. This is the place where his bone was fused with adamantium again by Cornell Stryker to make the Weapon X possible in the new timeline. The end credit scene of the 2016 movie showed Essex Incorporation collecting the Weapon X DNA to create X-23 and one of them was a cloned version of Logan. The next movie, Logan, takes place in 2029. Just a year ago, in 2028, Professor Xavier had a psychic seizure and almost 600 people got physically injured because of the psychic waves. Seven mutants inside the Xavier school also died which includes Dr. Jean, Storm, Cyclops, Dr. Hank, Kitty Pride, and two others. After that event, Logan took Charles and ran away from Westchester. They started living in the Mexican border with Caliban. Logan gets to find out that Essex Incorporation is making a mutant army and one of them was Laura, his own daughter created from his DNA collector from the Alkali lab based on the new timeline and experimentations. He happens to lose the life of Xavier and Caliban while he was trying to save Laura from getting kidnapped again by Essex Incorporation. He finally dies in the hand of X-23, another clone version of him, when he was helping Laura pass the border of North Dakota to enter Canada. And this is how the life of Logan ended. His dead body was buried in North Dakota by his daughter. Now the million dollar question is, who is the other Logan in Deadpool and Wolverine? To be honest, this answer is a bit complicated because the X-Men movies always had a very messy and inconsistent timeline. So I have given this answer in the simplest language possible in a separate video. You can watch it right now from the end screen. Excuse me, I'm Eric Lentra. Tell Xavier. Go fuck yourself.